Today on Real Life, a mother's spiritual journey after the disappearance of her daughter. Janice McKinney opens up about how God is by her side even as the case remains unsolved. Plus, where is heaven? The hard questions pastors weigh in on a viewer question. And on Real Life Coaching, Dr. Michael Brown prepares us for the next great move of God as he wraps up his coaching series, Playing with Holy Fire. That's today on Real Life. This is Real Life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. I said He empowers Amen. you. And the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black. I'm your host. I'm here with my wife, Terry, and Hi, our double co-host, co -co 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 co-co-host, both Amy Schaefer and co-co-host, <laughs> Jay Anthony. You're both pastors. pastors. Man, you guys are like the double duo here, dynamic duo. Yeah. And plus, right. you know, right. with the double, how did you say that? The dynamic the duo. Dynamic. And then we have pastors in the house for hard questions. We got it. There's a You're lot in the right of place today, folks. pastors here today. You've That's tuned right. into the right, right program. Mm -hmm. This is all, this is holy ground. Holy, holy ground. ground. Holy ground. Walk lightly. That's what, the, you know, we'll Fish. start singing. Terry's going to start singing Sandy Patty's song. Do you we just that song? We are standing That's, here we go. on holy ground. <laughs> Everybody say <laughs> But so, uh, give us a line okay, and we'll I, give you the I'm tune. The lone, I'm the lone parishioner. If you were the pastor. Oh, no, I'm not a pastor. Well, that, yeah, you are. No, pastor, they have a church. <laughs> pastor has a church. Where's Wait, my church? You, you are my only congregation. <laughs> <laughs> Terry's my only member of the church. I'm the only member. All the kids have left. Of the black family church. <laughs> and the dogs. And the, the dogs. Uh, the dogs, the dogs don't pay attention. The no, they do <laughs> <laughs> The dogs. Are the, and our collections are going down. Yeah. Way going down. That's right. I'm so in seas. We're, so, we're yeah. so glad that you've tuned in and been yeah. part of the family. Some, some of you watch every day, and I'm so thankful for you to watch us okay. every day and join in with us in prayer, standing together. God's at work. He's moving mightily. And maybe you've just joined in for the first time and tuned in and wonder what these people do on, on that show. Well, we're here for just a very simple reason. We want to we help you understand how the Bible answers real life's questions. I mean, it, and the Bible does answer real life questions. And, and that's what the show's all about, real life. You know, that's what real life is, pastors. Yeah, I was thinking about the move of God, and we have Michael Brown on today as our coach, and he's talking about the Holy Spirit and the move of God and how God's moving all over the place. He says this is the greatest revival of, of church history is we're in the middle of it. There's half a million, no, half a billion wow. charismatic Christians all around wow. the world, and that's the biggest number that there's ever been. Right so now? I asked, yeah, right wow. now. So what do you guys, you're pastor in here, do you feel that? You feel that momentum? I definitely do, yeah. I think more people, being in just one area for 21 years, it felt like in the first half, first 15 years, like you're moving a boulder. Mm. And now it just feels like, that. Like easy momentum, mm. people coming to Christ by the droves mm. and hundreds Hallelujah. and being set free and married. I definitely can tell and feel and sense a big difference, even in the, the 20 years we've been here. Wow. What about you, Pastor? Well, you know, I, I, I believe I want to see more. I mean, God is definitely moving, but I want to see more of that impact in our culture. You know, uh, our churches are growing and developing, but I want to see the culture impact and I want to see the salt and light. I want to see what Dr. Michael Brown saw in Brownsville throughout America. I don't want to hear about it in Africa and East Asia. I want to hear about it right here on our home turf. So I believe God is getting us ready uh, for that. I believe he's creating a hunger inside of us for that next move, which we're going to see the greatest awakening we've ever seen. I believe that too. And, and, and folks at home, stand with us in agreement. That's what God's doing. That's what he prophetically promised he was going to do in these last days. And we need to stand up and move with him. Let's go with him mm -hmm. and be those players in his kingdom. Those, those members of, you're, you know, you're gifted. Mm -hmm. You don't know how gifted you are. You don't know all that God's invested in you. 
he's invested such greatness in you. And why don't you just start un, un, uncovering it, like that old onion, unpeeling that greatness that's inside. And sometimes life just takes over and you get caught up in the mundane, everyday life. But step up out of that. Just take a little bit of time every day. I'm going to give you just a little, little coaching tip. Take a little bit of time every day, just you and Jesus. Mm. Just you and Jesus. Turn everything off, just you and Jesus. Yeah. And you watch and see what God does with your life. Mm. Little bit will turn into a big impact. Mm -hmm. Big impact. Amy, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to show, throw this to you, so here yeah. you go. I mean, how about just in your car, you're driving, and you take that little bit of time, you turn the radio off, you turn the podcast off, you turn your phone on silent, and just spend time with the Lord. Just listen to what He has to say, because He loves you. He has a great plan for your life. We're excited that the pastors are in the house today, and they're answering a hard question. It's all about life after death. When we die, are we going up to heaven or is heaven coming down to us? Let's hear what they have to say. <laughs> well, here we are. That was something. <laughs> If you were where we are, you and could see what we see. and see what we just saw. We're here with the hard questions on the hard questions set, and this is where we bring pastors together to answer questions like that right out of the Bible. I'm the moderator on today's panel. There are I'm Ray Heipel, pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church in Robinson Township. Chris Gibbs, pastor of Crossway Church in the Mars area. Pete Giacalone, Rainbow Temple Assembly of God Church, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center, Mount Washington. Well, pastors, let's get right into this. Jerry called in and he asked this question. After we die, the Bible says we will rise, but then it also says that heaven is going to come down to mm -hmm. earth. Yes. So what is it? I think he's, if you guys would agree, I think he's confused with two different functions taking place. The Apostle Paul, and I think we clearly agree with this, the Apostle Paul teaches in 2 Corinthians 5, to be absent from the body to, to, is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Wherever that is, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll leave it as a mystery to him. The moment we take our last breath, we're going to be present with the Lord. And I think he's confusing that when, 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 the, when, the, uh, when the new heavens and new Jerusalem comes down. Mm -hmm. throw, I'll throw it out to yeah. I mean, I, I agree with that. It's a, it's a matter of timing. Uh, but I think what there's a bigger issue that we've got to look at is there are a lot of people that will preach and teach this uh, idea of soul sleep, that okay. when you die, that you just go to sleep for yeah. the next however long because they say the Bible actually does not teach that you go to heaven right away, that heaven is this thing that's way later, that you're just asleep. But yet Paul would really argue with that right. to say, well, I, I'm torn between the two. I stay here. I'm a benefit to you. But if I die, I go be with, uh, be with the Lord. And I think in Revelation 21.10, where it talks about the new Jerusalem coming right, down, right. what it is, is that is something that happens later. So where right. am I? When I die, yes, I'm in heaven. And some would call this a temporary heaven because the, the heaven that is going to be is a new heaven, a new earth, where the, uh, the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the earth are going to become one. And basically it's a restoration back right. to what God, the Eden project, okay, what God <laughs> had already intended to be, that will be the restoration. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Absolutely. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, right, today, today you'll be with me in paradise. So there isn't any, you know, death for us is really we pass through this, this moment of, uh, you know, pain probably mm -hmm. with the soul leaving the body, but mm. then you're with the Lord and the soul is real. You know, the soul is mm -hmm. not something that's wispy or, you know, you see on Hollywood, there'll be this sort of, you know, like on Ghostbusters or something, this right, right. thing that you can see through that's, you can lose. But, you know, scripture speaks of the soul as, as who we are. I mean, right. it's our thoughts, it's our emotions, it's our, our, our will, our, our judgment, everything that you are, you know, your personality, your consciousness, that goes and you're with the Lord and you remember who mm -hmm. you are, you remember who you are, but you don't have any more sin. And as you said, Chris, um, there is a day coming, you know, right. when, when right. there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth and we get new bodies. Hallelujah. You know, new bodies that don't grow old, that don't lose their hair. I was going to say, mine's going to have hair in it. There's, you don't got to grow A little, little bit taller, little taller than down five, down five foot six. <laughs> so that's coming. But, you know, to be absent from the body, yeah. we will be absent from the yeah. body for a time. Amen. We'll be better than being in the sinful body, but the ultimate is to be in a new body mm -hmm. with the Lord. You know, the new heavens and the new mm -hmm. earth, Jesus as the, the light, we don't even need the sun anymore. I mean, yeah. you know, we get glimpses of yeah. what that is, but um, you know, and we know it's real, we know it's coming. 
Amen. Well, I think I just concur with all of these guys. I think they pretty much covered that question there, but I agree. I mean, that uh, I think that story there that you put in Revelation 21, I mm. think the way that you're mentioning that is, is right on point with uh, where that gentleman's looking to go. Well, the, the, the whole idea of what happens at death isn't a new question. No. Not at all. You know, that's man's wrestled with that question through the ages. And it's important for us to understand that when we die, no matter what the cause. That's right. That's right. I mean, a car accident. Right. Airplane catches on fire and you blow up and mm. go into smithereens, you know, yeah, sure. whatever. <laughs> that doesn't change the fact mm -hmm. that that moment, that moment, wh what happens to you? I think immediately you're Amen. in the presence of Christ. Amen. If you're a believer, if you're a believer. Well, you know, if you're not a believer, you're going to the place of torment. And, yeah. I, you know, that's real, too. We don't want to, right. you know, uh, right. water, water that down. There's only that's two right. places. You're yeah. either going to, you know, the, and I think there is a, a more ultimate coming at the final judgment. But I think immediately mm. you're with the Lord, True. you're in glory, or immediately you're in a place of torment and, and suffering. And that's never going to end either. Yeah, and I think one of the things to look at, too, is scriptures that people will use to argue against what you just said, which I, I mean, I, I agree. I think we're all in agreement here, but they will say like Jesus said in John 3, uh, 13, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. This is used arguably mm. to prove that, but the thing that that person or those people would fail to understand is this is pre Jesus right. going to the cross. Mm -hmm. See, nobody went to heaven. There was that place of paradise, right? right. That nobody right. was in there because the blood, the propitiation had not been made yet. But once Jesus went there, the veil was torn. We had access into that heavenly place. So though this is correct, it was pre-crucifixion, pre-resurrection. And you know, Chris, you said earlier about the confusion about soul sleep. And I think the poeticness of the King James Version. I am not attacking the King James. <laughs> but, but in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, when Paul writes, but I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep. Mm -hmm. And that's taken out of context. Well, it's just a very poetic way of saying they've died. Mm -hmm. So it, they're not sleeping because you know how some people literally hold on to this instead of the original text. Mm -hmm. In the original text, you're not going to have fallen asleep. Yeah. You know so, how it is waking up my kid to go to school. I mean, he's, you know, asleep is sleep. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the bottom line is this, as far as I can tell, and listen to the pastors, when you uh, die, you're going you're gonna to go immediately with the one of two places. Right. You're either going right. to be in the presence of the Lord or you're going to be outside the presence of the Lord. Now, outside the presence of the Lord is not where you want to go. So if you don't know right now, absolutely with certainty, that you would be with Jesus immediately. I want you to call us, 888-665-4483, because that is, <clears throat> that is job number one. Yes, sir. That's where we start this journey at. And if you don't have that confidence in your heart that you would be there, call us. We want to pray with you. We want, to under, want you to know that. And you can know it. Yes. Listen, you can Amen. know it. Right. You don't have to guess. That's right. You can know it. We love hard questions. Call the number that I just gave you, the, the number that's on the screen, or you can email us at hardquestions at ctvn.org and we'll bring the, the questions to the panel and we'll be uh, excited to answer those. Let's, let's take a break. Israel, the land of promise. Join Cornerstone Television Network on a journey of a lifetime in the Holy Land as we celebrate Israel's 70th year of independence. Walk where Jesus walked in Jerusalem. Ride a boat across the Sea of Galilee. Experience the wonder of the Garden of Gethsemane. And so much more on this special nine-day guided tour. Join Don, Terry, and the Cornerstone family on this once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage, October 9 through 17, 2018. Spots are limited, so go online or call today for more information and to make a reservation. Discover where God's prophetic promises were made, where they were kept, and where they are yet to be fulfilled in Israel, the land of promise. Wow, will you look at that? Look how beautiful Jerusalem's old city is. 
You know, friends, I'm Brian Bush, and that is actually my home. I live just the other side of that wall. It's a fantastic experience. It's a biblical experience, and it's all yours. Just waiting for you to come on over here in October. We're going to have a great time. And besides the fact that you're going to see the places of the Bible, you're going to walk where Jesus walked. You're going to be in the land of the prophets, priests, and kings. You're also going to experience some great shopping. And you're also going to eat some fantastic food. Friends, it's going to be a trip of a lifetime. And I want to tell you something. I want to be very frank and, and very direct in this address. You know, sometimes people ask the question, well, how safe is it? As I said, this is my home. I've lived here for 25 years. Nothing's obviously ever happened to me. But friends, we are traveling with an experienced tour operator. Decades they've worked here. They have experienced guides and drivers. We are keeping to the pilgrim's path. We are not going anywhere near to what you see on the network news. So please don't let safety be something that troubles you. It is a factor but if you look at it factually, Jerusalem is safer than Seattle. So friends, come on over here. Have the experience of a lifetime. I want to see you here in my home, Jerusalem. We're going to be here in October. Thanks for watching Real Life. <laughs> I, I, I see where Brian's standing, and I remember being right to that very spot. Yes, I do too. And he's right. Your safety is not an issue when we go to Israel for two reasons. One, they're very, very secure right. as a nation. Feel more secure there uh, than anywhere else I've ever really been. And second, where we've got the Holy Spirit and the angels are with us. We sure do. And so there's great comfort. There's never been a Christian tourist that has been heard in Israel as far as I know. Ever, well, ever. And it's just a great opportunity that you get to go with a group of fellow Christians and we go together and we just um, experience right where Jesus was born and he lived and yeah. guess what else? That it's a life change for yourself. Well, think you, about, you think about it. You can't help but have a life change. Think about having communion at the garden tomb. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, a, what an experience that w will be. Mm -hmm. Think about being up on Mount, Mount of Olives and looking up and seeing where that city is going to come down to that we talked about, the, the city of God, the New Jerusalem coming down in the air, 1,500 miles cubed. I mean, we're, we're going to look at the prophetic of Israel, where God made promises, where promises were already fulfilled, and then where they are yet to be fulfilled. That's right. And you know that is that, that timetable is coming on fast. God's timeline is engaged. So if you have the opportunity, call the number that's on the screen. Now this is not our number, it's a, it's a company that helps us put all these things together. They're, really what you're doing is you're calling for information. Mm -hmm. You're not calling to sign up and, and, and buy a ticket, you're calling for information. They will send you a brochure, they will get all that stuff to you quickly so that you can have all the information you need to make that choice, whether you can come with us or not. But first of all, pray, ask God, because yeah. this is a small group. There's only going to be just a one bus full mm -hmm. of us, and we're almost full. Just want to get the right people. We can be in harmony, spiritual harmony, because we want to leave more there than we took. That's so We want to leave more Absolutely. there yes. than we took. Mm -hmm. Well, our next guest is, uh, it was on hard questions when we went to Pastor Chris's church. Sometimes hard questions goes out to churches and we actually do the hard questions at a, at a local church. Love to come to yours if, if that would be something we could do. As a direct result from that night at his church, Janice McKinney started the process of healing. She's joined by Pastor Chris as we hear her story. Janice. So good to see you again. Yeah. Thank you. Pastor Thank Chris, you. good to see you again. That's it's right. It's been forever. Hell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about it. Now, I, a lot of people probably will remember when you start to tell the story, it was quite, it was quite, it was quite a, a traumatic event. Um, my daughter was kidnapped on February 22nd, 1985, um, around four, between four and 4.15. After she got off her school bus, she was walking back towards our driveway and um, somewhere in between getting off the bus and getting to our driveway, um, somebody picked her up. That's terrible. 
That's, That's true. Terrible. And I remember, because we're from the same community, Janice and I were talking about, we went, even went to the same high school, Knock High School, Knock Night. So I remember all that, that whole, that, that whole experience. Um, in Lose and Cherry, um, I, I can't even explain to anybody the excruciating pain. Um, it, it, it was something that I could never even imagine. Um, I was saying before, I, I remember my husband um, taking me in the car, trying to hold the door shut so I didn't jump out because mm -hmm. the pain was terrible. Mm -hmm. And um, I started to, to see somebody and he said, you know, Janice, what do you want? Um, number one, I can't bring Cherry back. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to um, just get through it. Yeah. And for many years, I truly did. I um, probably pushed it down and hid it away from mm -hmm. everybody. But um, a friend of mine started me going to Crossway Church, and I met Pastor Chris. And it was just like, that was it. That was the sign that I needed. Mm -hmm. um, I started seeing him. Um, I felt like a weight had been lifted off of my shoulders. Um, uh, after the whole process um, for my daughter's birthday, um, we celebrated by um, lifting off balloons. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, you really there's, there's a picture. know how yeah. healing is, is when you can tell your story and not cry about it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, thing, <laughs> some things in life, you never are ever gonna find the answers mm -hmm. while we're in this life. Right. Yeah. We have to trust. Yeah. And you're coming to that place of being able, I can't imagine how, because it's really, I couldn't imagine what you had to go through. It's a, mm -hmm. only God with you would allow you to keep your sanity when mm -hmm. that, when it, yeah, when that one happens. of the things, when we were there last, uh, you know, in March of 2017 at Crossway, uh, you know, she was there. There was a lot of hard questions that we did. The whole panel was there. She came up at the end of it and she asked a question and never remember this. She said, how do you forgive somebody that you don't even know? Right. And so you guys didn't understand the question. So I said, can I, yes. you know, so I told the story uh, and then Dr. Glaze looked straight at her and told her, you need to grieve, you need to meet with your pastor, you need to get into counseling. So I, I took that, you know, when Dr. Glaze says something, I listen, okay? <laughs> and, and so we began to meet every week for, I don't know, six, eight weeks or even more wow, than that. Yeah. And she, I said, I want you to bring in albums. I want you to show me pictures. I want you to tell me, because she had only ever had, um, you know, vision, you've only ever been seen on TV or whatever telling the bad story, but there was a good story. Yeah. Right. God was bringing her through a grief, bringing her through something. Mm -hmm. And we got to be, Cornerstone got to be a part of it. Hard Questions got to be a part of it. Crossway got to be a part of it. But Janice got to see Jesus be a part Hallelujah. of it. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. That's great. That is and, and watch God heal. Start the healing yes. process. Mm -hmm. yes. Did you get to the place where you could forgive that person? Yeah. Because I know deep down in my heart that um, God sometimes lets things like this happen so that we, he's there to catch us mm -hmm. because not everybody realizes that's what he's there for. He's there to hold us, to mm -hmm. carry us through every heartache and every pain in our life. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. it, it was just the light bulb went off and... Here I am. You know, Janice, this is a great opportunity, and if you'll do this, I think you'll be blessed. There are people watching this program right now that maybe not have as dramatic of issues you had to deal with, but they're dealing with those issues that they don't have control over, and they have to turn them loose. How would you, how would you speak to that person to be able to get to the place of surrender? I truly found that um, seeking Pastor Chris, seeking somebody that could help me through that process because I didn't know how to, you know, ride mm -hmm. the road. I mm -hmm. just didn't understand it. And um, I needed, and I found that with Pastor Chris, and I, I recommend him to a lot of people. <laughs> um, I have some friends that just need help. And, you know, sometimes you need to go somewhere and talk to somebody mm -hmm. that doesn't know you that has no idea who you are and why you're there. 
but he helped me just understand so much. Now, understanding and then also help with learning how to grieve, because I'm sure you probably kept so much inside for so many years. Oh yeah, the guilt. Mm -hmm. Guilt yeah. was my biggest thing, yeah. right. because if I would have been there, yeah. it wouldn't have happened. But um, my friends at the National Center said, even if you would have been there that day, it might have been the next day. Right. right. And if That's it wasn't true. that day, then it would have been the next day. So right. it would have happened because whoever wanted my daughter would have gotten her at, at, at another time. Absolutely, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the idea that... Uh, God brought all the pieces together. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I hear in the testimony is the Lord, you've been hurt, hurting for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord brought you into the church. Mm -hmm. We still hurt in the church. Yeah. I mean, it was, the church by itself wasn't where you found the answers that you needed. But then the Lord brought you in connection. You see, I'm just trying to lay out how he had orchestrated. Yeah. That's right. and now look at this too. Uh, Janice, tell them tell, um, what you do on Wednesday nights right now. Because at our church we have discipleship programs on Wednesday nights. Yeah. What do you do on Wednesday nights? I have two little girls that I have. It's a program called The Prims. And uh, me and those two little girls, we have some adventures. <laughs> She's <laughs> mentoring two young ladies that are around the same age as her daughter was oh when she was taken. So what God has, God has restored her to be able to do that. And she has smiled more this year than I think probably ever uh, because there's that joy that we have because of that healing. And she was able to forgive somebody she didn't know because of the power of God. Restoration, mm. that's truly what I, what I see, restoration. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants to do. He wants to do it in your life. Maybe you're in a situation to not like Janice in terms of losing a loved one like that, but this is a time for ministry. God, the Holy Spirit's here to minister mm -hmm. to you. God wants to put you on that path. So call us, 888-665-4483. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, you don't mean to get all the answers, but you can come to a place of peace. Amen. You can mm -hmm. get to that place of restoration, a new beginning. Yes, right. You know, we all need new beginnings. Right. It's not bad, don't, don't allow that condemnation to ride on you for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. Be set free. God has set you free in Jesus. And then you can have a new beginning. And then maybe the Lord will open up doors for you just like he has for her mm -hmm. to help minister to people that need you. Right. We need you, the church needs you, people need you. So come on, call us, 888-665-4483. Life doesn't have to be this way. God makes changes. Let's go see what Sydney's found in the news. An Arkansas man who got trapped under water in a tractor says God is the reason he's still alive. Eldon Cooper got stuck after he accidentally backed up too far in his tractor and fell into a pond on his property back in February. He says it went upside down and as he was buckled in his seat, the cab quickly began filling up with water. Cooper told the Baxter Bulletin that's when he started praying for God's peace. When his wife saw the tractor in the water, she called 911. Cooper spent several hours in the cold water until emergency crews arrived were able to pull him out. Cooper says if it wasn't for God, things could have ended up very differently. The Salvation Army is now in the supermarket business. The nonprofit opened up its first grocery store in East Baltimore. It's called DMG Foods, and the savings are up to $3 cheaper than other grocery store chains in the area. The Salvation Army says it picked Baltimore because the median household income is below the federal poverty line, and many people don't have access to healthy food. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on purpose. My relationship with Jesus goes way back, way back to eight years old. On a Saturday afternoon, how I got to watch TV by myself, I'm the oldest of six, I don't know how that happened, but I was in the room by myself, turned on, TV was already on back in those days, what was on was on, there was only three channels, and so here's Billy Graham comes on, didn't know it was Billy Graham, and I, as, as a young man I watched him, he, he challenged the audience to accept Jesus as their Savior. A daily, minute by minute intimacy with God through His Son Jesus that's so personal. And I continue that until the end of my life, or until Jesus comes back. So it's a growing relationship with Jesus, and it never, it's never going to end.
Welcome to Real Life Coaching. It's our goal to help you become the very best you possible. And then as the best you, the way God created you, you can win in life and win in life his way. Dr. Michael Brown finishes his coaching session with us where he focuses on the keys to being ready for that next move of God. Are you ready? I want to be ready. I want to get in God's flow and watch him do mighty things. Let's get started with coaching. Dr. Brown, I want to just thank you again for being a coach with us in Real Life Coaching. I've learned so much just being with you in the sessions, and this is our final session, in this, at least in this series. You said something a couple sessions back that just sticks in my head. You talked about the season that we're in and this end outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the great prophetic revival that you, st you talked about, the beginnings of that, and what's happened over the last 50 years. Well, that just stirs me up. Now, I don't want to miss this. You know, I, I want to be where I want to be. I want to be where God wants me to be. What do we, I have to do, and what does, what does our other students have to do to be ready for that move of God? And you know, we, we didn't compare notes on this beforehand, yet we both have a sense that there's a, a, another wave coming. God's doing great things around the world, but, but even in America, yes. that there's another wave of the Spirit coming. So, so that's the big question. How do we get ready? I, I mean, I think it's first really, really important that we just understand what the Bible says about the gifts and power of the Spirit. So I encourage everyone afresh, read the Bible like you never read it before. Read it and believe it. Read it and notice just how much the work of the Spirit is there. You go through the book of Acts, and I think the Holy Spirit is referenced about 60 times, 6-0. You take that out, you don't have a lot left in Acts. I mean, you have, you have a shipwreck, you have a, a split between a couple of guys, you have, you have a few other things going, but you, you don't have a lot if you take out the powerful ministry of the Holy Spirit. A lot of our churches today, we get by without the Holy Spirit because we've got a good program. Many years ago, A.W. Tozer said that if the Holy Spirit was taken out of the early church, that, that everybody would know it. The work would not go on, at, at, and, and everybody would know it. If the Holy Spirit was taken out of the modern church, and he wrote this over 50 years ago, that 95% of the work would continue unaffected. So we really need to be spirit-dependent people. Thank God for churches that run well, that are professional, that do things with excellence, but ultimately, the only way people are going to get saved and set free and transformed yes. is the power of the Spirit. Look, look, you and I cannot transform anyone. The power of the Spirit, with the Word of God, that's how transformation is going to come. So I, I want to give you four keys, four key things to do in your own life if you want to be ready for the next thing that God is doing. Number one, pursue intimacy with the Lord. Pursue intimacy with the Lord. Everything flows out of your personal relationship with God. All the roots in your own life, they do not depend just on your pastor or the TV preacher or the author of the book you're reading. Ultimately, they depend on your own relationship with God. Immerse yourself in the Word of God. Lay solid foundations. And, and nothing is more important than being with the Lord. Look, I'm a doer. I, I, I did a leadership test one time, and my number one quality was achiever. And, and you know what that means. Every day you start with a clean slate. Every day is a clean slate, and you have to produce something new. Even vacations, holiday, you have to produce something new. I'm an achiever. I am putting out stuff constantly, and the Lord always has to remind me because I'm putting out new articles and new videos and new radio shows and new TV shows and new books, and I'm traveling and I'm speaking, and the Lord has to remind me being is more important than doing. Being with the Lord is more important than doing things for the Lord. As we lay those solid foundations of being with Jesus, what does it say in Mark 3.14? That Jesus chose them to be apostles and appointed them to be with him. 
right? Acts 4.13, the Jewish leadership looked at the apostles, saw that they didn't have special training, but notice they had been with Jesus. John 15, Jesus says, unless you abide in me, you can't bear fruit. If you abide in me, the branch abiding in the vine, you will bear much fruit. So put a deep, deep emphasis on intimacy with God, on being with the Lord, and immerse yourselves in the word of God. Read it over and over. Get the bird's eye view. Just keep reading through scripture on a regular basis. To the extent we are grounded in the word, we will not be moved about by the latest wind of deception. So get grounded in the word of God and, and have the bird's eye view and then the worm's eye view where, where you focus and dig in and get deep, okay? Absolutely foundational. And then put a great emphasis on discipleship being a disciple and making a disciple. So you start by deepening your own relationship with God and then say, okay, why am I here? Why does God have me here? Just to be a parent, just to have a job, just to preach, just to teach. Why does he have me here? Well, we, we serve God in all these different ways as parents, as singles, as couples, as, as workers in the secular platform. We serve God in all these ways, but we're here to make him known. Boil it down. Why am I here? I'm here to know God and to make God known. Boil it down. Why am I here? I am here to be a disciple and make disciples. So that means someone who is grounded, someone who is steady, someone who has understanding. In, in, in Hebrew, in Greek, in Latin, the, the root of the word disciple comes from learn. We are students of God. We are students of the word. We are students of the spirit. And, and our whole being here is to recruit others, to introduce them to Jesus. You see, when we put the emphasis in the right place and the Holy Spirit comes in power, now there, there's a channel for the working of the Spirit. In, in the 1990s, around 93, 94, I saw the Holy Spirit moving powerfully and people were being touched and I knew something was going on, but I immediately saw the two dangers, two ditches on either side of the road. On one side of the road, there was the ditch of religious tradition. Someone jokes that the, the seven last words of the church are, we never did it like this before. So anything new, anything different, that's not God, throw that out. Then on the other side, the ditch on the other side of the road, what was that? That was the, the ditch of manifestation mania, of, of, of superficial sensationalism, that we're just gonna get caught up with the unusual things in the revival, be like the book of Acts, to get caught up with the wind, or just to get caught up with tongues, instead of getting caught up with Jesus. So what I saw was essential. If we were going to move from just being blessed into bona fide revival, if we were going to move from refreshing and renewal into bona fide revival, we had to keep our eyes on Jesus, obviously. We need to let the Holy Spirit move freely and then put our emphasis on holiness and harvest, preaching repentance to the saved and to the lost. Holiness in the church, harvest to the lost. And then as the Holy Spirit is poured out, He's poured out onto the world. He's poured out into hurting lives. As the Holy Spirit comes, there's no stagnation because we're not just soaking it in and drinking it in and trying to have a good time. You know, a lot of Pentecostals, Charismatics, we like to dive in the river and dance in the river and run in the river. Okay, that's great, but there's a dying world out there and they need the water from that river, the life-giving water. We need to take it and bring it to them. And, and we need to get our own houses in order. And that means where there are abuses, we need to confront them. We need to confront them. So again, number one, intimacy with the Lord. Put your whole emphasis on being with the Lord, spending time with God in quality ways, being in the word. Secondly, we're here to be disciples and to make disciples. Thirdly, we must set our own house in order. If you're a pastor, if you're a leader and you're watching this, may I encourage you, not to be afraid to confront error, not to be afraid to correct error. Do it with love, do it with compassion, but I wanna encourage you to do that. I, I wanna encourage you if you're a follower of Jesus and you see something that's wrong, don't just question yourself all the time. If you're a student of the word, if you love the word of God and you see someone acting abusively, that's not where you wanna send your funds. If you see people that are not preaching the truth of the word, that's not what you wanna back. So we need to set our own houses in order. And, and then fourth and last, we need a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit. You know, it's an amazing thing, but as believers, we can grow stagnant. 
we can backslide. Look, I've, I've shared my own testimony many times, but in the late 70s and early 80s, I was a committed believer. I was, I was finishing up my master's and then PhD work at New York University in Near Eastern Languages and Literatures. It was during that time that there was the boat people crisis from Vietnam. So there were these refugees fleeing from Vietnam and our church led the way in the New York area in sponsoring refugees right in our homes. So we all, we, it didn't matter what kind of house you had, you had an extra room, you had a couch, you took in an individual, you took in a couple. We took in poor and needy people in the state. We, we lived in many ways sacrificially for the gospel. Our whole family became a home now. If you've got needs, you come. That's just how our whole church was doing it then. I was a committed believer. I witnessed to others uh, in, in grad school. I was unashamed of, of Jesus. And yet, I had left my first love. In the midst of this, I had become ashamed of the gifts and the power of the Spirit. I mean, after all, that's like that Pentecostal stuff. Yeah. People slain in the Spirit, tongues, and people shaking. Said, that's not sophisticated enough. I'd, I'd rather have a more orthodox theology and something I can sit with my professors at university and talk with them about the profound beliefs that I have. Without this Pentecostal charismatic stuff, I left my first love as a serious believer. I left my first love. And when God got hold of me and brought me through deep repentance in 82 and then sent a fresh move of a spirit that radically touched me and shook me and touched and shook many in the church, I've never been the same since then. But along the way, I've had to more than once get touched afresh because there's the routine of life. There's the busyness of life. There's the pressure of ministry. You just had your third kid within four years. You're working overtime every day just to pay the bills. Ministry's wearing you out. You just went through a church split. You've been sick and in pain for the last two years. We get worn out. Mm. It's human nature. It happens in this world. And, and, and what we, we need to do is come to God afresh and say, oh God, touch me again. Yes. God, fill me afresh. After all these decades of ministry and, and ministry in the spirit, Don, I'm in a place now of freshly going before the Lord again and saying, God, I need a fresh touch. Hallelujah. I need a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit. And whatever enhances that, maybe it's listening to some of your favorite worship music and getting alone. Maybe you can only do that in a 15 minute period during the day. Maybe it's while you're driving to work. Oh God, there's got to be more touch me. You don't have to be so formal because God will hear the cry of your heart. Skip a meal when you feel to, or fast as you're able to, longer than that. And, and when you go to the Word and you see God, you've, you said it's written. I see it written here, but I'm not experiencing it today. I know there must be more. Let that hunger turn into desperation. God fills the hungry. So my question, how hungry are you? Maybe you're so filled with the things of this world, so filled with sports and entertainment, so filled with distraction and business, so filled with other things that you're not hungry for God. Let's pray for a fresh hunger. Right. Let's pray for a fresh thirst. Jesus says in Matthew 5, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. He says in John 7, whoever's thirsty, come to me and drink. Revelation 22, whoever's thirsty, come and drink. Isaiah 55, everyone hungry, thirsty, come eat. God has a feast of his spirit, of his presence prepared for us. Let's unclutter our lives. Let's seek him earnestly. Let's get our roots down deep. And let's expect that God who gives his gifts freely, not because we earn them, but because of his love, he wants to pour out his spirit afresh. He wants to use you to touch a hurting and dying world. And together we can see God do amazing things. Will you just lead us in a prayer? This is our last coaching yes. session. Would you just close us off with a word of prayer? Absolutely. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. We ask for fresh hunger, mm -hmm. fresh thirst, fresh desire for you. Lord, remind us of areas, Lord, where we may have left our first love. Remind us of things we once experienced we no longer do. Remind us of how great you are. Expand our vision, Lord. Show us our blind spots so that we can really have everything you desire yes, and Jesus. be everything you desire yes, and God. fill us afresh yes, with your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Lord, may we walk worthy of your mm -hmm. spirit Thank in you. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for being our coach. My joy. I've enjoyed every session of it. I've learned so much. It's been a blessing to me. Thank you. And I know it's a blessing to you. I know that it has because I know you're hungry for God. So you wouldn't be involved in the coaching if you're not hungry for God. 
You'd be, you'd be satisfied with where you are, but you're not. You're not satisfied. You want to press forward. You want to go to that next level. You want to hear more from the Spirit. You want to hear His voice. You want to feel His touch. You want to, you want to love the way He loves. You want to be effective in His hands. That's why this book is so important. So if you'll call the number on the screen or go to on, online, we're going to give you the book as you plant a seed in the ministry here at Cornerstone. Just a seed faith. Whatever that number is, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Let God tell you what it is. And not, long, not only the book, the DVD comes along with it. So it's a great one-two punch. It's a combination that will be a blessing to you and a blessing to your family and a blessing to, you know, how, what it happens is, is as you start to hunger and thirst, God meets your needs. He fills you. And when He fills you, it starts overflowing. The Bible says out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. See, that's going to be flowing out of your spirit, the rivers of living water. And when that water goes out onto a dry land, into people's lives that are just dry and need to be refreshed, their hearts are touched. The Holy Spirit then uses you as a vessel of His honor, of His glory, of His love. And then a life gets touched by the Spirit. And so that person then tells their story of God's love, a testimony. Here's one of those testimonies. The ability to forgive. This is such an important notion for we as Christians to live by. Sadly though, I once let bitterness and animosity consume my heart. I was hurt very badly by someone very close to me. My anger and rage toward that person grew stronger with each passing day. Not only that, but physically, my body started to grow more and more sickly. I somehow needed to rid myself from this darkness. I called Cornerstone, and as I prayed with a prayer partner, I felt the Holy Spirit take hold of me and give me the power to forgive. As soon as I forgave that person who hurt me, my sickness went away. It was truly miraculous. I now choose to never hold on to my hurts, but to give them to God and to live by His grace. You know, the message of Dr. Brown is so uh, special and it's so applicable for today. What I, I enjoyed being with him because we go back. <laughs> Not personally, we don't go back, but we go back to the same season because he came up in the uh, Jesus People movement. You guys way too young, you yeah. know that. Yeah, I was a little young you too. You were way too young too. But <laughs> maybe you much. were, maybe you remember. Yeah. It was a season of the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm supernatural signs and wonders and the whole idea of the charisma, the charismatic gifts. It, it, and that's where he came from. And it's interesting how he took this journey. So because he experienced uh, that sovereign work of God in his own personal life, and then he went away for training and it, it, it dampened him. Mm -hmm. You know, he started questioning him. Well, he yeah. said he, in it, he left his first love, mm -hmm. you know, so I thought that was really an interesting uh, comment to make, that he reevaluated and realized that he left his first love. It all comes together, you know, the, um, the passion of the Pentecostal, the charismatic and the gifts, plus he was grounded in a lot of teaching that all comes together. It does, it does. Pastor Jay, I, I'm, I'm a word guy. I, I think words are important. And we take words and we misuse them, like the word Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. You know, Pentecost just means 50. 50 yeah. That's all it means. Right. But we've made it, Pastor Amy, into this denomination. Right. We're Pentecostal. Well, are, are you 50? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma was Pentecostal holiness. That's I mean, thing. there was no TV, no baseball, no mixed Ooh. bathing, no makeup, <laughs> mixed bathing. hair. I mean, well, no makeup. So <laughs> I came from, hard. I couldn't wear pants to church. Oh, I really? mean, yeah, and wow. just the Assembly of God, Kara, so, oh yeah, I'm very aware of the well, Pentecostal movement. I grew up, first of all, it was called EUB, Evangelical United Brethren. And I remember movies were sort of out, oh, yeah. you know, you weren't allowed to go to movies and what, playing cards yeah. was a big deal. And we did not wear slats or pants right. to church. I mean, right. that was a no-no. So, and then we, uh, EUBs became Methodist. So then, hey, 
all those worlds went out the window. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that was my grandma, one of the sweetest, most yeah. holy, precious women of God, yeah. who she ate through Bibles, not yeah. one, but many. So, I mean. Well, but, but, but the point, Dr. Brown's point, <coughs> is that's all traditions. Right. Yeah. You know, those are all traditions. And they're not necessarily bad traditions. They're just traditions. We, and if we make the traditions into our doctrine, That's then right. we're in trouble. That's right. Because if we only believe it because the pastor said it, then we're in trouble. The pastor should prompt us, and I got two pastors on the panel here, yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll ask you. You should teach it or preach it and encouraging that person then to go get their Bible mm -hmm. and study it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you may go off down some crazy U-turn and your people don't know the truth. Well, what did Jesus say? He said, you make the Word of God of no effect through your traditions. Mm -hmm. So when we start bringing traditions in instead of doctrine, which is what we've done in a lot of ways, we're replacing the Word of God and the doctrine with traditions and fads and all sorts of things. We start getting off into error and goofiness and then we lose the fire of God because the fire of God is only going to flow through the doctrine of God. He's not going to light uh, up things that are our little fallacies or our little man-made ideologies. He's not going to ignite those. He's going to ignite His Word. Yeah. That's why it's so important for us to understand Amen. and to be able to study and to be able to put the Word into action. And that's why this book, uh, Playing with Holy Fire, is a very important book that you should put into your life and understand where is the tradition, where's the tr tradition go that goes away from the Bible? And if it does that, then abandon it. Abandon it and come back to the Word. Because it's the Word that's anointed. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is on His Word. I had a friend tell me one time, you want to know the will of God? That's right. It's found in His Word. That's right. That's where you're going to find the will of God. Somebody's going to come up to you and give you a personal word of prophecy. That's great. Make sure it's in the Bible. <laughs> it lines up with the Bible. Because you can't follow that person around the rest of your life and say, now, what God, now, mm -hmm. now does, what, what does God want me to do? You've got to have that in you. I want you to have this book and the DVD. It's our, our plus on teaching and the book. It's our gift to you. We'll plant it into your life as you plant a seed into the ministry here at Cornerstone. It's just that simple. As you plant a seed in, whatever the Lord will say to you, Put that gift into the ministry here, and that'll come back to you too. It's, you're planting good seed in good ground. It'll have a good harvest just on itself. So you're really not buying a book. You're planting a seed into ministry. We're really not selling a book. We're giving you a tool, right. tool for you to grow in. Because if you're serious about your faith and you want to become the man or woman that God wants you to be, you got to invest in that. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you, that's not going to happen by just hoping and sitting around waiting for something mm -hmm. to move you. You got to move something. We got to get back to the doctor. You know, one of the things I believe, in my opinion, this is just my humble opinion here, the thing that has been removed from this generation is that you can have the fire of God without a sacrifice. It doesn't have to cost you anymore. There's no cross needed. Right. All you can do, you can have the fire of God, you can get the blessing of God, you can get the anointing of God, you can get the best of God, but never have a sacrifice. In order to keep the fire going in your life, you must continually put wood in the fire. You've got to add something to fire, which is our flesh. Yeah. And we have to get back on the cross. And that's where he talks about being disciples. We have to get back to making disciples. It costs to live for Jesus. So yeah. what, give an example for somebody that they're going, what do you mean a sacrifice? What would that be? Ah, oh, you know, if you don't tithe, that's okay. You don't have to give God 10%. Yes, right. It's okay if you don't get to prayer. God understands. Yes. It's okay if you keep sinning. God loves you just the way that you are. Just keep on coming to Jesus. And of course we should, but it doesn't replace the fact that Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross daily. Yes. It means you have to submit to God's will and not your own. You have to be willing to give up your life and take up his. And that's where we get in the big battle is because it's hard. What's the balance? Yeah. Where, do we, where are we being legalistic? And, but where do we also have to be willing to make the sacrifice to live this life for Christ? I think the closer you get to Christ, the more free you get, not the more legalistic you get. That's like, right. sure. And, and the, the more you're with Him, the more you want to read His Word. The more you're with Him, the more you want to spend time with Him. The more you're with Him, the more the generosity of God flows through. You're like, oh, I only have to give 10%? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. How about some more? I'm ready to give some offerings. Yeah. So I think as you spend time with That's Him, right. I, what, what He said is we're not just human doings. We're That's not right. just doing, yeah. doing, doing. We're beings. 
We're disciples, of, we're followers of Christ. And so we're human beings, being with Christ, really um, that's how you get the holy fire stirred up in you, mm -hmm. is to be with Him. You and, know, the, the, spirit, okay. the Spirit just popped this, bi this Bible verse into my mind. I'm going to read it, we're almost out of time. But this is for somebody that's watching specifically for you. <laughs> listen closely. If you're serious about God, listen closely. In Hebrews, the fifth chapter, Paul says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, teachers right. you, but you need somebody to teach you again. Yeah. Get the word again. The first principles of the oracles of God, you have come to where you need milk, not yeah. solid food. That's, right. That's for somebody. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you're still needing the milk, yep. the baby food, the pablum of the word instead of the meat of the word. Mm -hmm. And you should be a teacher. You should be a pastor. You should be a minister. You should be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. You should be out doing the work Amen. of the kingdom right. because God's got a call on your life. I just feel the Holy Spirit on me yeah. right now that He's got a call on your life. Amen. Right. Now listen to me. You can go the rest of your life this way or you can change. Yep. That's your decision. But I pray to God mm -hmm. and I pray for you that you will say, now is the time for me to make that decision. I'm moving forward in the name of Jesus. I won't settle for the milk. I want to go to the stake. And the stake is in the word. The stake's in your call. So this book's going to help you. I want to give it to you. Call the number on the screen along with the DVD. Don't hesitate. Somebody, the Holy Spirit's Prompting you, prompting you right now. Who knows what the Amen. Lord will do with you? Who knows right. what God has right Amen. ahead of you? All you got to do is say yes and go. Yes and go. And I can't encourage you any more than that to do it right now. Call us if you call us at 1 665 4483. We want to stand with you. We want to pray with you. We want to say we're right there with you because, folks, we're all together. Pastors, yes. we're, we all have to do this on an ongoing right. basis. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's easier to go back. Mm -hmm than it is to go forward. Well, Amen. you know, I also want to say that even if it's for one person, heaven rejoices and there's a big party when we bring one person into the kingdom of God. Right. Amen. Amy, will Amen. you pray? Yes. Father, we just ask right now yes, for your Jesus. fire to fire. fall yes, God. Yes, on our Lord. brothers and sisters. Yes. Father, that they won't yes, even God. be able to contain yes, it, that they'll get on fire yes, for God. God. They'll get passionate oh, about being in His presence. Hallelujah. They'll get, uh, they'll be hungry for His Word and more yes. of His Spirit. They'll build Thank churches. You, they'll be evangelists. They'll go out into the highways and byways, and yes, they God. will draw people to Christ. Yes, God. Father, we just thank you that even the fire falls on this TV yes, station yes, at Cornerstone like never before, and it yes, just God. sets ablaze a mighty, mighty Hallelujah. harvest in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Receive from the Lord when you hear His voice. Don't say, I'll wait till the next time. There may not be a next time. We're here every day on Real Life. Our goal is to watch you walk successfully in your life. We'll see you tomorrow. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.